the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding and clothed him in a robe of glory. A very warm welcome to everyone, uh, both present here this morning and those who are joining us online. And among us this morning are some DBS brothers who are in grade 7 or 8, and they are here to observe our worship and to write a report to their religious education teachers. So if you're sitting next to one of these young men and he looks lost, Help him, all right? Help him to understand what's going on, especially in turning the pages. All right, let us begin with a moment of silence. <clears throat> Jesus said to his disciples, You are my disciples if you obey my commands. The Lord our God, the Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and shout for joy, giving God the glory and shall be forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Your unfailing kindness, O Lord, is in the heavens, and your faithfulness 
reaches to the clouds. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Your righteousness is like the strong mountains, and your justice as the great deep. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For with you is the well of life, and in your light shall we see light. Lord, have mercy.
The Lord be with you. Also with you. God, who in generous mercy sent the Holy Spirit upon your church in the burning fire of your love, grant that your people may be fervent in the fellowship of the gospel, that always abiding in you, they may be found steadfast in faith and active in service. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 50, verse 15 to 21. Seeing that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph intends to treat us as enemies and pay us back for all the wrong we did him? So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he gave us this order. You are to say to Joseph, Now, Please forgive the crime and faults of your brothers, and all the wrong they did you. So now, please forgive the crime of the servants of your father's God. Joseph wept at the message they sent to him. Then his brothers went to him themselves, and throwing themselves at his feet, said, Take us as your slaves. But Joseph replied, Do not be afraid. Is it for me to put myself in God's place? The evil you planned to do me has by God's design been turned to good, to bring about the present result, the survival of a numerous people. So there is no need to be afraid. I shall provide for you and your dependents. In this way, he reassured them by speaking affectionately to them. This is the word of the God. Thanks be to God. Let us stand for the responsorial psalm. <laughs>
Today's second reading is taken from Romans chapter fourteen, verses one to twelve. Give a welcome to anyone whose faith is not strong, but do not get into arguments about doubtful points. One person may have faith enough to eat any kind of food; another, less strong, will eat only vegetables. Those who feel free to eat freely are not to condemn those who are unwilling to eat freely. Nor must the person who does not eat freely pass judgment on the one who does, because God has welcomed him. And who are you to sit in judgment over somebody else's servant? Whether he deserves to be upheld or to fall is for his own master to decide, and he shall be upheld, for the Lord has power to uphold him. One person thinks that some days are holier than others, and another thinks them all equal. Let each of them be fully convinced in his own mind. The one who makes special observance of a particular day, of, of a particular day observes it in honor of the Lord. So the one who eats freely eats in honor of the Lord, making his thanksgiving to God. And the one who does not abstains from eating in honor of the Lord and makes his thanksgiving to God. For none of us lives for himself, and none of us dies for himself. While we are alive. We are living for the Lord, and when we die, we die for the Lord. And so, alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. It was for this purpose that Christ both died and came to life again, so that He might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why then does one of you make himself judge over his brother, and why does another among you despise his brother? All of us will have to stand in front of the judgment seat of God. As Scripture says, "By my own life says the Lord, every knee shall bow before me, every tongue shall give glory to God." It is to God then that each of us will have to give an account of himself. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia! Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, one God who was and who is and who is to come, the Almighty.
with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. Then Peter went up to Jesus and said, Lord, how often must I forgive my brother if he wrongs me? As often as seven times, Jesus answered, not seven, I tell you, but seventy-seven times. And so the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who decided to settle his accounts with his servants. When the reckoning began, they, they brought him a man who owed ten thousand talents. He had no means of paying, so his master gave orders that he should be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions to meet the debt. At this, the servant threw himself down at his master's feet with the words, Be patient with me, and I will pay the whole sum. And the servant's master felt so sorry for him that he let him go and cancel the debt. Now, as this servant went out, he happened to meet a fellow servant who owed him 100 denarius. He seized him by the throat and began to throttle him, saying, Pay what you owe me. His fellow servants Fell at his, his fellow servant fell at his feet and appealed to him, saying, Be patient with me, and I will pay you. But the other would not agree. On the contrary, he had him thrown into prison till he should pay the debt. His fellow servants were deeply distressed when they saw what had happened, and they went to their master and reported the whole affair to him. Then the master sent for the man and said to him, You wicked servant, I cancelled all that debt of yours when you appealed to me. Were you not bound then to have pity on your fellow servants, just as I had pity on you? And in his anger, the master handed him over to the torturers till he should pay all his debt. And that is how my Heavenly Father will deal with you unless you each forgive your brother from your heart. This is the Gospel of Christ our Lord. to you, O Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Very good morning to all of you, especially our young brothers from TBS. And we hope that this experience would help you understand better the Christian worship tradition, especially in the Anglican Church. And if you have any questions afterwards, you can remain and ask me, all right, uh, if you have any questions. And I can post to you a video recording of, that explains every part of the Anglican service to you. Secondly, <clears throat> uh, just to remind you, uh, if you are in the St. Augustine's Church service team, or if you are a parent who has brought your child to Sunday school, you will require a parking permit, a temporary Sunday morning parking permit from DBS. 
after church service, come to me and I will give you a form for you to fill. And you can, if you can fill it today, then you can hand it to me and I will apply for the uh, parking permit for you. To regular church members as well, all right? Thank you very much. <clears throat> Let us pray. Father, we pray that you will always be with us to help us understand today's message, especially when it is a difficult one. So we ask that your spirit to be with us. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Now, today's theme, we continue to look at what it means to be a Christian. And today's theme is one of the most difficult. How do you forgive someone? And why you should forgive someone, especially when they have hurt you so much? Tomorrow I will be speaking to the uh, uh, DBS assembly for the uh, senior high school student section. And we are dealing with the same text. And in that text, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, it includes praying for those in power and for those in authority, including the king, all right, which means the government. <clears throat> when we read the Old Testament lesson today, it is the story of how Joseph was sold by his brothers as a slave to Egypt. Originally, one of them wanted to kill him, all right, because they were jealous of him. But then in the end, Judah said, if we kill him, the sadness itself of losing Joseph will kill their father. And so in the end, they decided it was best that they sold him into slavery and make some money out of it. But then when famine came, Joseph was appointed by the Pharaoh to become the prime minister to oversee disaster relief and to begin preparing for the upcoming disaster. And so when Joseph's brother came to Egypt, and when the brothers realized that it was the brother they had sold into slavery, they were afraid. They were afraid that Joseph would wreak vengeance on them. But then their father was still alive. And so they thought maybe because our father is still alive and Joseph will not do anything. But then our story continues towards the end when Jacob himself has died and all the brothers had already moved into Egypt to seek relief from the famine. And so they were really afraid and they thought, disaster, you know, in the Catholic safe all right, there's nothing else we can do, all right, Joseph will now definitely kill us. But if you read the text in verse 19, this was Joseph's reply. Do not be afraid. Is it for me to put myself in God's place? The evil you plan to do to me has by God's design been turned to good. Two points here. Let's look at the second point. The evil that Joseph's brother has done on Joseph was used by God to do good. So in other words, there are many instances in our lives where we face very difficult situations, whether we, are, we have been bullied in school by higher form students. I experienced that bullying in Malaysia because I was very short, I was Chinese, and what made matters worse is that everyone in Malaysia hates the Japanese in the 1950s and 60s, and my grandmother was Japanese, so I'm a half-breed, so I get bullied all the time. Now, the question is this, sometimes we ask, why, why does God put us in situations like this to be bullied? I remember being beaten up every day in school, and the school was on the hill, and the bigger boys would then push me down the hill and I would have to roll all the way down, dirty, bleeding, especially with bleeding nose, and then go home. And then my dad would get angry and I get another beating from him. 
I, so I get beaten every day by the bullies and by my dad. And so in the end, what did I do? I decided to fight back. But what happened? I ended up in the police station. I was arrested for breaking three heads, right? Two heads of the bully and the third head was my own because I took a brick and wanted to throw it at them, but the brick landed on my own head instead. So the question is this, in Jacob's, in Joseph's story, he said that the suffering he received from his brothers was turned by God to become a salvation experience. If his brothers had not sold him into Egypt, he would not have become the prime minister of Egypt and save the people of Egypt and also of Palestine and his own family. Now my experience is that the bullying experience has taught me so much that in effect, I, one of the reasons why I dedicate myself to work among students, especially with students with problems and especially specializing in medical anthropology and psychiatry is for this reason. So you will never know how God would change your negative experience, your bad experience of being bullied into a positive experience of teaching you to be a better person. But the most important point in this Old Testament story is this. When Joseph told his brother, it is not for you, for me to put myself in God's place. So in other words, so in other words, what Joseph is saying is this. It is not for me to judge you. Because we are told later in the Psalms and in Romans that only God can judge someone whether he is right or wrong. And so what Joseph is trying to tell us is this, that it is not for us to judge those who have done wrong to us, but to forgive them. And only God has the power to punish and judge those who have wronged us. Now, if we take the law into our own hands, all right, if we take the law in our own hands, there will be a lot of trouble in Hong Kong. Let me use an example, road rage. Road rage, all right? Um, <clears throat> we constantly find that in Hong Kong, you'll be surprised, and that road rage is not as to whether who can drive faster, although I have once experienced that on a minibus, uh, after leaving uh, Christchurch, where I used to help in the past, I got onto a minibus, and as we were turning from Waterloo Road into Prince Edward Road, all right, the minibus cut ahead of a very, very expensive Land Rover. And, and you could hear the driver of the Land Rover breaking to avoid a collision. But the driver got so angry that he immediately revved up his engine and cut ahead of the uh, 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 minibus as we were going down, all right, as we were going down, uh, 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 not Waterloo Road, Prince Edward Road, all right, and blocked the minivan, got up, and he actually took out a baseball bat from the back of his car, his, his Jeep, his uh, Land Rover, and wanted to smash the minibus. Lo and behold, I, I don't know where he came from, but a police car appeared. <laughs> <All right. laughs> and, and of course, all of us had to get down and to explain to the police what we saw, and, and the guy with the bat, of course, you know, was arrested. But then, uh, I had to open my big mouth. I said, actually, you know, the, the minibus driver caused the problem. 
you know, he, he cut into the lane where the uh, Land Rover was and almost caused an accident. And of course, the minibus driver heard me say that and became very angry. You know, that was, <laughs> that was the kind of response I got. So I never take the minibus from, <laughs> from Christchurch to Hong Kong anymore from that day onwards, just in case. But anyway, but anyway, and that, that, is, that is the other problem we have, isn't it? Because constantly, we are put into situations, whether it's by God or by the sinfulness of man, where we will have to make a decision whether to do the right thing and at the same time, in other situations, to forgive those who have hurt you. Now, in the Gospel lesson that we have this morning, or you have St. Peter. In the last few weeks, we have been reading a lot about the experiences of St. Peter. And we know that St. Peter is one of the, 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 the leaders of the disciples. But every one of the disciples, especially his two brothers, doesn't like him. All right? Because he's foul, foul mouth, he is very brash, and whenever his brothers misbehave, he would beat them up. All right, and then as a result of that, his own two brothers and, and the other younger disciples doesn't like him. So one day he got so angry and he asked Jesus, how many times must I forgive them? Seven times? But Jesus said, seven by seven times, 49 times. In, in Cantonese we have a saying, which actually means endless. And this is what is required of us. No matter what others have done to us, whether rightly or wrongly, no matter how we suffer at their hands, Joseph has told us it is not for us to put ourselves into the place of God to wreak vengeance because in the end we are told by God that and St. Paul's that vengeance belongs only to God and we not merely as human beings especially we as Christians we are told to forgive the wrongs that others have done to us precisely because God himself has forgiven us for an even greater wrong. We are the servant who owes God tens of thousands of dollars. And if we are unable to forgive the person who owes us just a few dollars, how do we expect God to forgive us? But God does. He forgives us for our most daily sin of rejecting God, of selfishness, of self-centeredness, of neglecting our responsibility as a Christian or even as a human person for our neighbours and even our enemies. If, but most importantly, he forgives us for rejecting him. If he can forgive us of this most deadly sin of rejecting God, God then asks us, can't you therefore forgive someone else for the wrong he has done? Because what happens when you seek revenge? My experience of being bullied and seeking revenge, of fighting back, has taught me one lesson. You can never win. You can never win. Because, not only because I was smaller, the last fight I had with school bullies, 
All right? And that was in primary six, grade six, two months before I graduated from school. All right? I got kicked out of school. Because in that fight, I took three German shepherds from my home, Long Kao, you know, two big guys. And me, one person, fought four others, and of course my German shepherds helped me as well. All right? But in the end, where did I end up? I ended up being arrested at 11 years old and put into prison. Now, the reason is very simple. <clears throat> The chief superintendent of police in Kuala Lumpur at that time was my uncle. And so my father told my uncle to arrest me, to put me in prison, to teach me a lesson. And the lesson I learned was horrible because while I was sleeping, intentionally, my uncle told the other prisoners to harass me, although they were in the other cell. So I was in my cell, and while I was sleeping, one of them urinated on me while I was sleeping. And that's, that's the most horrible experience for an 11 year, years old boy when you have this big, evil looking, tattooed uh, gangsters urinating on you. And when it comes to breakfast, you know what I got? Rice mixed with a lot of salt and sand. All right, so, so. Although it was done on purpose, but the lesson I learned is this. Although seeking vengeance seems to be the only way to get out of being bullied, to be honest, that's not the way. Because you can never fight a bully. Your resisting of a bully will only make him or her bully you more. The best way to deal with a bully is to ignore them. And when you fight back, they will see that they have succeeded in getting you angry. And this is their fun. This is where they get their fun from. To get another kid angry so that they could keep bullying him. On Friday, when I was at DBS during lunchtime in the canteen, I was talking to a grade seven, uh, no, grade eight student. And then another grade eight student came up and said, You know, oh, you'll be watching pornography. All right? Now, this student is really tall. All right? this, the the, the uh, grade eight student I was talking to was only about that tall. Why else this? His classmate was about that tall. And he kept saying, Lei say ya, Lei tai in front of me while he was talking to me. And the shorter student whom I was talking to replied, That got the bigger guy to be even happier because he provoked the little guy to fight back and defend himself. Now, and this is the psychology of bullying. If you could bully someone and make him respond, you succeed. And that is the guy you will bully for the rest of your, his life while he is in DBS. Because that guy is worth bullying because then the bully derives pleasure from succeeding in his bullying. And as a psychiatrist, I can tell you, never respond to any bully. Even if it's painful for the several times, but he will give up when there is no fun in bullying you. And this is what God is trying to tell us indirectly. With forgiveness as well. The ability to forgive someone is a gift from God. Just like I told a young boy, forgive him, because he may be the most unhappy person in your class. And when he bullies someone, perhaps he's seeking attention. Perhaps he's indirectly saying, help me. 
Perhaps he's a very unhappy person. And when you scold him back, that's the response he received from home, from his parents. Perhaps he's so rejected by his parents that the only way he knows how to seek help is by bullying others. And hopefully, maybe he's hoping for someone who would understand him enough not to quarrel with him, but to become a friend with him, to forgive him, and to talk to him, and to help him to become accepted by other members of his class. And this is why Joseph told his brothers, I am not to put myself in God's place to judge you. The only response God wants me to say to you is that you are forgiven. And in our Gospel lesson, our Lord Jesus Christ had taught us to forgive others, to forgive others because God himself has forgiven us. And God himself has forgiven us by allowing his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us, that our greatest sin has been forgiven. And because we are forgiven, we must also learn to forgive others. Amen. Let us stand. And with the words of the Nicene Creed, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from God, true God from true God, begotten of God of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your church may be welcoming and open, and let us draw others to you by our love and understanding. May we be a support to the weak in faith, a strength to the wavering, and uplift the fallen. Let us not be judgmental, and yet let us stand firm in our love for you and for your will. Teach us to be forgiven towards others as we seek forgiveness from you. We pray for the outreach of your church, for its mission to seek out the lost and recover the fallen. Lord, as you gave your life for us, help us to give our lives to you. We pray for the banks and 
commerce of the world. We pray for countries and people that are deeply in debt. We pray for justice and fair dealings in trade. We remember those who are burdened by mortgage, all who have had homes or lands repossessed, all who have become bankrupt, and all who have lost the little life savings that they have. Lord, as you gave your life for us, help us to give our lives to you. We give thanks for what you have given to us. We pray that what we have may be neither hoarded nor squandered, that we may give to the relief of the needy and to the building up of our world. We give thanks for all who have been generous to us and pray that our homes may be places of grace and generosity. Lord, as you gave your life for us, help us to give our lives to you. We pray for those whose lives are diminished by greed and selfishness, for all who are afraid to venture or to risk. We remember those afraid to commit themselves, all who have been hurt in love or betrayed by loved ones. We pray for all whose relationships have been broken. We pray for all in trouble. We pray for those in sickness. Lord, as you gave your life for us, help us to give our lives to you. We give thanks for all who, in their generosity, have given their lives in the service of others. We pray that as they gave their love and their life, you will give them love and life eternal. We pray especially for our loved ones. May we with them share in your love and in life everlasting. Lord, as you gave your life for us, help us to give our life to you. Lord, when you come in your glory, make us to be one with you and the saints who are now at peace. Merciful Father, accept this prayer for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us stand. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace from His Son, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the Life Giver. The peace of the Triune God be always with you. And, and also, also with you, let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with you, peace. Peace be with you, peace. peace. <clears throat> Dear brothers and sisters, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to our Father in heaven. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, give us the bread of everlasting life and make us branches of the true life.
Holy God, receive this bread and wine we bring before you this day, and bring us also to that radiant glory of Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to you, O God, forever. Yours, Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty. For everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you, O Lord, and of your own do we give you. to give you thanks, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. And all that you reveal of your glory, the same we believe of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, without any difference or inequality. And we, your Holy Church, acclaims you, Father of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. Three persons we adore, one in being and equal in majesty. And so with angels and archangels, and with cherubims and seraphims, we sing forever of your glory. Thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, 
in your word spoken through the prophets and above all in the word made flesh Jesus your son for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world in him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you in him you have brought us out of error into truth out of sin into righteousness out of death into life on the night before he died for us our Lord Jesus Christ took bread and when he had given thanks to you he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said take eat this is my body which is given for you do this for the remembrance of me After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And therefore, according to his command, O Father, we proclaim the mystery of faith. our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you O Lord of all presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine we pray you gracious God to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and the blood of his new covenant unite us to your son in his sacrifice that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit and in the fullness of time put all things in subjection under your Christ and bring us to that heavenly kingdom where with the Blessed Virgin Mary the mother of our Lord and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord the firstborn of all creation the head of the church and the author of our salvation by him and in him and with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit all honor and glory is yours Almighty Father now and forever
seated, being made one by the power of the Spirit. Let us pray with confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our day as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be Blood of Christ.
Across your chest.
Let us pray. Keep, O Lord, your church with your perpetual mercy. And because without you, our human frailty cannot but fall. Keep us ever by your help from all things hurtful and lead us to all things profitable to our salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Faithful God, may we who share this banquet glory in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, our salvation, life and hope, who reigns as Lord now and forever. Amen. Let us stand. <clears throat> God the Father, who defends you on every side, who first loved us and made us accepted in the beloved Son, bless you. Amen. God the Son, Christ the Redeemer, deliver you from all evil, who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, bless you. Amen. God the Holy Spirit, strengthen you in all goodness, who sheds abroad the love of God in our hearts, bless you. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please be seated for the announcements. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome back to St. Augustine Chapel again. And today I think uh, there are some um, new friends um, uh, among us. Um, Maybe um, we can welcome um, the one sitting next to Nigel. <laughs> so later, maybe you can stay behind and we can uh, have your uh, uh, contact so we can add you in the WhatsApp group. For those who still haven't joined our WhatsApp group, please also come to me after the service. So you give me, uh, me the number and I'll add you to our WhatsApp group so we can share the news of our chapel later. Thank you. And. Um, for today's notice, first of all, please, will you please turn to page 21 of the pill sheet. And uh, we all can see that there is a, the monthly offering summary of August. So if you, you can check that um, there are uh, figures of your number. So um, please check if that is the offering that you have made in, back in August. If that is not correct, please come to me and also or Kim, so we can uh, check with you uh, later. And uh, for those uh, newly joined our chapel, well, you can see that on my in my hand there is a blue envelope. So please kindly take uh, a numbered envelope. So every time when you make your offering, you can put it in and put in, and then later we'll count it, then your offer, and at the end of the financial year, we'll prepare a receipt for tax well, planning purposes. Thank you. And. Um, on page 22, there is the baptism on the confirmation class of 2023 to 2024. So um, the baptism class will begin on Thursday, uh, 5th of October. Um, this is very important because uh, I always remind our brothers and sisters, don't uh, miss the deadline because um, if you wish to have the baptism by Dean Franklin on Pentecost next year on 19th of May, you have to attend uh, the, the course punctually on the, as, as scheduled. And the first lesson, the first class will be on the 5th of October. So please uh, register with um, Ken and Eric beforehand. And also, secondly, the confirmation class after the baptism class will begin on Thursday of June, um, the 6th of June, and with confirmation by uh, Bishop Timothy Cobb on the uh, 25th of August, uh, Sunday next year. That is uh, 
um, I think this is our 11th anniversary that by then of our chapel. <laughs> Um, so to join this class, please um, WhatsApp or stay behind to discuss with Kenneth Herring afterward. Thank you. And um, um, there's also some notes that if you have not been baptized or were baptized as a child, you still will uh, take some lessons uh, from Kenneth Herring to learn, learn about our Christianity, faith, and attend both the baptism and confirmation class and uh, to be confirmed as an Anglican. And if you have attended only baptism class at um, this chapel or Holy Trinity Cathedral, you have to attend confirmation class, well, also to be confirmed. And uh, if you are transferred membership from Catholic Lutheran or uh, Methodist Church, but baptized as a child, you will have to attend both the baptism and confirmation class to be received into the Anglican Church as well. And um, on next page, the uh, 23rd page, um, now the Sunday School new term has begun. Um, just a gentle and warm reminder to all parents that you have to stay here in this chapel throughout the, the, the service. Don't just uh, leave your child and say bye to them and hang around in a, a campus because sometimes your kids will really need you well, uh, for toilet, toilet breaks or for anything else. So please stay here to enjoy the service together with us and uh, bring, your back, uh, bring back your child afterward. And um, also, May I also draw your attention to the um, church news that we share in the WhatsApp group. And there are some um, celebration activities of our Hong Kong Shen Kung Hui 180th anniversary. And that is on the page, well, it's down below. Da, 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 da. Hey, yeah, that, that's a schedule, the events calendar on page nine. And um, the, the point four, the Thanksgiving service and also Thanksgiving dinner. Um, you can see that uh, we already shared a, a, I think there should be a Google form, I'm not sure Google form or, or link or, anyways, we have to register beforehand as soon as possible. So if you wish to join the Thanksgiving service, uh, which we held on the 23rd of um, October, and or the uh, Thanksgiving dinner on the same date, uh, in the evening at the Ocean Park Marriott Hotel, please register as soon as possible. Basically, um, there are only six seats reserved for the dinner for our chapel, but, but uh, well, we'll try to get more if uh, more of our members are interested to join. So no worries, just uh, register as soon as possible and we will try to arrange, uh, make a certain arrangement for all of us. And um, also, um, there is a um, point number six, one plus run. Wow. Very difficult to say. <laughs> Six One plus run provincial sports carnival. So on the 11th of November, there is the, the day before um, the Garden Fate of DVS, there will be a, a, a running event which will be held in, at the Hong Kong Science Park from 8 a.m. to 1.30. And you can see from page 10, there are different categories um, that we can join 5 km, 2.5 km. Um, 500 meters of family obstacle run. So um, the age group, you can see that, well, the kids uh, age four or above can join the, the last category, but it's not a race, not, not non race around 1km. It's just have some fun with your kids. And uh, if your kids are, are a bit older, then you can join, they can join a 500 meters run. And uh, it's not too early. It's just start at um, 8.30 and afterwards. So all, all please, um, try to enroll and um, there is a QR code there that you can uh, register. And um, I think for the rest of the notices we can uh, go through by ourselves after we left. Uh, just a reminder, <clears throat> all of you, if you want to uh, uh, receive the temporary parking permit on Sunday morning from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m., all right, when you come to church, uh, come to me, I'll be standing at the back with the hard copy form and I can give it to you and if you could fill it in today, then you can hand it to me. But the last handing in will be all right, next Sunday. All right, next Sunday, uh, that's the last day for, to hand in the applications. All right? Because uh, the school has reminded us that all parents and all members of the church is encouraged to park at the car park right next to the track and field. Right? Uh, the access road into uh, the IV building and to the court 
uh, strictly no parking because it's the access road for the ambulance and fire engine. So if our cars are rather big and bulky, and if you don't park properly, it will block the fire engine. And uh, <clears throat> at the last academic year, some of our members got fined by the fire station because they left their cars and parked even after the, uh, the uh, permitted hours. And the end result was that the fire uh, services was having a rehearsal with our borders in uh, the hostel and the fire engine and ambulance couldn't come in. All right, so do be careful. Try to park and must park only in the car park near the track and, tree, uh, uh, track, uh, track and field. And come to me immediately after the service for the application form. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right. <coughs> Let us stand. <coughs>